What's up, my LS Crazy Amigos? It's your boy, Terry, speaking from the garage shop once again. Here to offer you some more Big Bang for the Buck product and info. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Terry, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I had to get another engine stand because I'm about ready to build my 12 bolt, which I will be showing you how I'm going to rebuild my 12 bolt for my 67 Chevelle. But my other engine stand has an engine on it, so I can't use that. So I have to get another engine stand so I can mount my 12 bolt so I can, you know, re, you know, rip it apart and put it back together. But we're not going to talk about that today. What we're going to talk about is I put a video out a couple weeks ago about the, the you, know, you know, changing my pump, my water pump on my LSA because I was getting like little air pockets and would cause the pump not to pump the water. And I fixed that by flipping it around and lowering the inlet of the pump lower than where the outlet of the reservoir was. So now there's constant water going in there. I got tons of questions about that. And uh, so I'm going to answer some of the questions that I got. Most of the questions were, you know, Terry, you know, I'm getting ready to put an LSA on my car. What way should I route? How does the water flow go from the pump? Does it go to the intercooler? Does it go to the exchange? Wh you know, which way should I set mine up? How should I set mine up? I'm glad you asked those questions because I'm going to answer it the way I did it. Now there are four key players, four, one, two, three, four, key players in cooling your LSA system or any other type of supercharged system that you put on your LS engine. You got your top, you got your reservoir, you got the pump, and you also got your heat exchanger. Okay, so we're gonna go over each and every one and show you what they do. Let's go. Now this is the top. The job of the top is to bring cool liquid in and take the hot liquid out that the supercharger uses. All right. Now, if you was to open up this top and flip it upside down, you would see like a little mini radiator, almost look like a heat exchanger. So that's where it is. So you got the in or the out, whichever way you want to use them, but it's an in for the liquid and an out for the liquid, just like a radiator. This is the reservoir. The job of the reservoir is simply just to hold fluid. Hold fluid, it comes in and it goes out. That's what the reservoir does. Now, if you're racing your car, you might want to put your reservoir in the trunk because what happens is it doesn't get any of this hot air coming out of the engine compartment. It's always staying cooler. The further the reservoir is from the engine, the cooler the liquid will be going to the reservoir or either coming from the reservoir. The disadvantage of that is you got to run a lot of hoses, but that's the job of the reservoir. Now, this is the pump. The job of the pump is to pump the fluid throughout the system. That's it. Pumps it in, pumps it out. That's the job of the pump. It's very simple. You see this big radiator thing sitting here? It's not my radiator. That's my heat exchanger. The job of the heat exchanger is to bring in the hot liquid, the hot fluid from out of the supercharger and through a series of fins and the motion of the car moving forward, it will cool the liquid and it'll send it right back to the top for it to be, to, for it to be used again to cool off the supercharger. That's what the heat exchanger does. One more time from the top. <laughs> All right, this is how I ride it mine. Okay, so we're taking it from, okay, coming out. Hot water or fluid comes through this line, all right? And it goes to the end of my reservoir. All right, now you remember, out of the reservoir goes into the pump. Out of the pump, all the way through the firewall, you can see that, to the heat exchanger. All right, this is where it all happens. It all gets nice and cool and everything like that. And it just, it just gets all nice, like, Ice cold, I'm not ice cold, but it get nice and cool and everything like that. And it goes out from down here, you can see it, of my heat exchanger through the firewall all the way back. Cool water liquid goes back into the top. And that's pretty much a simple route that I went for cooling off my, my LSA. So there are the parts of the LSA supercharger. Now, should you happen to get a trifecta, cold air, cold supercharger fluid, and cold fuel, your car will be kicking. It'd be like a different car. You ever drive a car, like, I don't know, on a 90 degree day and you drive the same car on a 40 degree day, it rides a lot better because of that dense cold air. It's just double it with the supercharger. If you drive a supercharged car on a 90 degree day, yeah, it's nice, cool, okay? Drive it in a 40 degree day. It is a different animal, all right? So, hope this helps you guys out when you're setting up your LSA and routing which way the fluid should go and all that type of good stuff, all right? But, 
I'm looking at the clock on the wall. Or should I say ceiling? It's time for me to head on off. Now, check this out. If you like what you see, you know what to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. Tell your friend, telephone, tell everyone about, you know, Command 66 because we're trying to do some things here. And if it ain't for you, we can, you know, if it wasn't for you, I should say, we wouldn't be able to do it. But I'm glad that you guys are aboard and I'm glad you like what I do. So until the next time you see me, to the next time I see you, always, please, always be easy. And I'll catch you guys real soon. Take care.